uh, it's great to be here, everyone. Um, um, I have to admit, uh, yesterday, as the organizers, at the folks at MindBody definitely know, there was a really good chance I wasn't going to be able to make it today. So I was flying in from uh, the New York, New Jersey area. So as you guys probably saw, there were tornadoes, there was flash flooding, and I just thought in my mind, I was like, geez, like, I, like I'm in this session that's called Unstoppable, uh, and it's not called Unstoppable except for weather delays. So I was like, okay. <laughs> I'm still going to make it, so I hopped in an Uber, and we're going. And I was like, we've got a mission at hand. We've got to do this. And so I'm in the Uber. It didn't start raining that much just yet, but I'm in the back here. I see someone stopped ahead of us on the side of the highway. And you know, I tell the Uber driver, you know, my flight's probably going to be delayed. So hey, brother, you know, if you want to stop or at least see if everything's OK, because he had his hood up. Like, um, you know, I don't mind, you know, I, we're not flying anytime soon anyway. So um, uh, the Uber driver looked me dead in the eye through the mirror and I was like, oh, okay. Uh, he was like, we're not stopping. And I was like, okay, this, uh, this person's rather unstoppable. And I thought, wow, like he is tied to that mission, that Uber mission of just moving people, getting me to where I need to be. So I said, wow, like, does the Uber, does the mission really drive you that much? Like, because that's pretty extreme, man. Like, we could have helped him. Uh, uh, and he looked, and he's like, what mission? I'm not on a mission. And I was like, well, why, why aren't we stopping? And he looked me dead in the eye and said, you know damn well he was offered an extended warranty. Uh, and I, I, was, I was like, I was like, wait, that, that's not just me? Wait, I thought they were just calling me every day, offering me this warranty. Uh, and so it was a real... <laughs> <laughs> so I, <laughs> in a very difficult night, I, I had quite a good laugh uh, uh, all the way because I was like, man, that guy, that guy should be here on stage uh, I instead. But, uh, but overall, I just wanted to kind of come up here, tell you guys the story of Box and kind of what drives us, what drives me, and how that's evolved over time and why I'm really excited for all of you guys here today. So when you think about the Box mission, what do we do and, and how do we do it? Well, we try to help the world stock up through our technology. That is our mission statement and that is what we do. Um, I like to say in years past, I always kind of you know, was self-deprecating and said, you know, I'm a glorified toilet paper salesperson. Um, that's always kind of what we did. We sell a ton of bulk toilet paper. So you can imagine this was a scene last year when there was nothing on the shelves like we were sitting in the Indiana Jones factory of toilet paper. It was like that warehouse in the final scene of Indiana Jones. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? We are about to get robbed. Uh, because this has a, you know, and it was the first time anyone has ever said street value of toilet paper. Uh, so this has a street value of X, Y, Z. And I was like, oh my gosh. And you know, like friends I hadn't talked to in like 20 years since high school hit me up on Facebook. Hey, you know, it's been a long time, but uh, you know, you got that connect for that toilet paper? And I'm like, ah, oh, you know, maybe. Uh, and so I drove around uh, my neighborhood driving, uh, delivering toilet paper. And so if this was the kind of end scene of 2020, if you rewind back to where we first started, we started in a garage in central New Jersey. That's where I grew up. We started in a two-car garage, and you might think, and some of you guys probably have started businesses in garages. If you haven't, you know, it's like the dream come true. It's like, I want to start a business in my garage. I want to live that dream. All the great companies start in a garage, right? And so um, whenever I'm asked that, I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, man, you, you don't want to do that. Like, I, I, I was 30 years old sitting in a garage. This was the garage. It was not pretty. Um, I was, like, neighbors, like, were, were wanting to move because of us. They, I was like that weird person. And so there was like the elementary school bus stop on my corner. And I, you know, it was really self-conscious. The kids would walk by my garage, cross the street, and then walk, and then cross the street back. And I'm like, OK, I get it. I am that weird dude selling candy and toilet paper out of his garage. So uh, I was kind of uh, uh, self-conscious. But you know, we kept going. We kept going with that mission. But this is where it all started. We started hiring. We got a few orders. We started hiring neighbors family, friends, uh, anyone that just wanted to come on and live this dream of starting a, a business in our garage. So we started setting up rows. Uh, there was like some of the uh, Mrs. Meyer stuff that went under our pack table. Uh, but it really wasn't going anywhere uh, until we had that final spark. And as we look at this next kind of um, um, uh, video, you just have to remember whatever people say on TV is absolutely true. It is, it's, it's proven. Science, it is fact. So just believe what they say. Uh, and then also, too, you, like wine 
drinking wine at 10 a.m., 11 a.m. is really, really good for business. So uh, here we go. Particularly excited about yes. this is a warehouse club on your phone, so you don't have to go to those big stores <gasps> to get your bulk items, discount prices, what? free Shipped. shipping, free shipping free. to your door uh, on most items. Some are, some you pay for shipping, but most for free. That's genius. Just think what you're saving gas, yeah, and headache, yes, and time, headache, everything. Time. Lucky that. Genius. genius, love it. Okay. <laughs> So we're sitting there in the garage uh, watching this because they give us a heads up the day before. It's like, hey, do you mind us talking about you on, you know, do you mind Kathy Lee and Hoda talking about you guys? And I was like, no. Uh, and so we didn't think they would actually do it. When they actually did it, it was like a comical scene. The order started coming in. We used to have this bell every time an order came in. It was like, turn the bell off just because it's getting really, really stressful. So we started hiring everyone we can get our hands on. We undrilled the garage door. There was no garage door. We undrilled the door going into the garage door. Even less kids were starting to walk in front of my house at that time. Uh, and so it really, you know, dropping off pallets on my driveway. If you zoom out a bit, you, to this day, actually, please don't stalk me, but if you did on Google Street View, you would see this like 40 foot container in front of my house and just cars up and down my street and just people holding boxes on my front yard. But overall, kind of what we found was that we, we, we were in a great opportunity. This was every order that we first shipped after that, uh, after that um, uh, Today Show hit, then like a quarter la later, then one quarter uh, after that. So it was this really, really interesting rise that we had while we're all sitting in the garage. And so for me, one of the key lessons, and there's a few here, one of the key lessons here was like, one, we gotta get the F out of my garage, because by this point, like it was full on, like it was really, really bad. But two, we had to automate, and we did so, uh, and now if you go into one of our fulfillment centers, this is what it looks like. So less than, you know, seven years, oh, well, actually we were at year four when this happened, 40 feet clear height, we're no longer in a garage anymore. You're seeing like these totes walk, roam around this facility. It's a gigantic facility filled with toilet paper, fortunately or unfortunately. Um, but we basically kind of evolved as a business along the same vision. There was that vision lock, that mission uh, was very, very critical in what we did. Even today, if you go into the next video, uh, we actually build our own robots. So we said, you know, screw the conveyor belts, we can do better. So in our newest fulfillment centers, we now design, engineer, and build our own robotics. And so if you come into like our newest fulfillment centers, there's these bots roaming around, it is quite trippy. Um, they, you know, they have like a LiDAR system, they stop, it is just the wildest thing ever. Because for people joining the company now, they think this is normal. But for me, every time I walk into one of these facilities, I'm like, geez, this, it wasn't that far removed from my garage. And let me tell you about my garage and the story about the kids. Uh, but overall, when you have that vision lock, you can do a lot of things. You can trust each other. You don't need to micromanage the team anymore. Because again, whoever hires the best, the brightest, whoever says, I want to hire the best people from the best universities, from the best experience, sit them, sit them down and tell them exactly what the hell to do. Uh, it just doesn't, it defies logic. And so we trust our team quite a bit, even down to these handwritten notes. So today, uh, just about every order still gets a handwritten note from the packer. It's not an auto pen, it's not pre-printed, someone is writing it. And so if you order diapers, sometimes you'll get say hi to the baby for us. If you order the next size up, you might get, you know, oh, growing up so fast. And so, you know, people often ask, well, does it ever go off the rails? Because you're not checking every card, right? Well, I'm like, yeah, we don't check every card, but there's only been a few times where like it's been kind of uncouth what was written. And so, you know, um, yeah, it's creativity. It's a fine line between kind of creativity and craziness. So there's a very fine line. And so we sell everything in bulk. So toilet paper, paper towels. Uh, we're trying to get more healthy snacks on there now. But overall, we sell everything in bulk. And that includes uh, contraception. So we sell I think a, a 40 pack of Trojan condoms. And so someone, not a business, someone bought four 40 packs of Trojan condoms for just self-use, 160 condoms. And so the packer sitting here, hmm, order nothing else. I know what I'm gonna write. Uh, 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 and so, uh, it was, at, it was at that time we had to put guardrails. Uh, and so, uh, but rest assured, that person still works for us. We were, there was a big debate of whether they should be fired or actually promoted. 
he's worked very hard since. Uh, he, uh, uh, he's been since promoted, so it was uh, quite creative uh, on their part. Uh, um, but overall, um, kind of what we found is this. And so that was the mission. Mission is very critical. It, couldn't, it can be one of the critical components of being unstoppable. Timing can also be. So if you think about it in your own lives, if you guys run your own businesses, timing can be very important, whether it's catching it at the right time or at the peak of the right time or as the timing shifts. But overall, it's really, really important. Look at this chart you have here today. It took 46 years for electricity to permeate through a quarter of the American population. Radio, 31 years. Television, are you seeing a trend? The web, seven years. If you think about cryptocurrency, uh, if you think about you know, the stock market even, um, that curve is getting sharper and sharper and sharper and sharper. So I like to think, you know, I, I've watched Wolf of Wall Street a few times. If Jordan Belfort came up to me and said, you know, sell me this pen, young man, I would say, this pen is a damn NFT backed by cryptocurrency. Boom, you know? And so if you think about it, like, that is timing these days. You put anything into an NFT, it is going to sell solely because of timing. So mission, potentially critical. Timing, potentially critical. Purpose, also potentially critical. So mission and purpose, again, a very fine line, but it is different uh, in my mind. So overall, uh, what I would like to kind of end with us, end our session here today with, is really finding purpose. And so I like to say, um, oh, you know, we'll, we'll bring you back to that original time when we were still kind of barely out of the garage. We were in our first fulfillment center. It was still largely manual, um, but we were starting to hire people we didn't know. So the company was about 100 people by this time. Um, and what we generally did uh, was promote from within the company. And when we promoted from within, we would have this really great dinner. Um, I, I, you know, at this time, we were still in Central Jersey. So you know, we would just do it up, either at Chili's or Cheesecake Factory or something like that. And so um, you know, it's Central Jersey. It's, uh, uh, and so we'd get the private room. Maybe we'd go to like Seasons 52 or whatever it's called. And so we had the private room. And one of the most memorable moments um, was this. So again, we barely had HR at that moment. Our HR rep was a recent, or he was a current, uh, uh, he was getting his degree in HR. He wore Supreme hats uh, uh, to the facility. Uh, uh, it just, when you saw him, you were like, probably not an HR professional just yet in his career, but he got there uh, in the end. But basically, we had this private room. We were in the back um, and sitting there. And so uh, drinks started flowing. Remember, these were the days really before HR. So first drink, everyone's happy. A lot of these folks, remember, this is the first time they've ever had access to a career. This is the first time they've ever been celebrated in a corporate environment. So all the executives would fly in. There weren't that many at the time, or drive in. And we'd really be honoring these folks. And so as we're sitting there in this back room, we're just having a grand old time. So two drinks happen, three drinks happen, four drinks happen, and things are getting pretty kind of like pretty wild. Uh, I, I look over, and someone clanks his glass, um, and it's Tim. So Tim, as you can see, is a Lakers fan. So Tim was an early employee in the company. Um, uh, he clanks his glass, uh, you know, had probably a few too many drinks already, uh, stands up uh, and says, I've got, I've got something to say. Uh, and I'm like, oh, geez, this is the most short-lived promotion in the history uh, uh, of, of promotions. Like, don't do this, Tim. I'm sitting there, like, mortified. I look over at our HR rep who has a Supreme hat, and he literally does this. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, he, in his mind, he's thinking, I read all about a situation like this. I am ready. And so I'm like, don't do this, please. What is he going to say? What is he going to say? Um, uh, so he says, I got something to say. Um, uh, and I was like, okay, this is, you know, um, and I got something to say to the CEO. And so he looks me right in the eye and I'm like, this, you know, I thought maybe we can recover. This is like started here. This is going downhill real quick. So I'm sitting there mortified. Um, and then he says, Y'all don't know me. And I was like, OK, I, wow, this is going real low here. Um, and so he says, I actually am college educated, uh, paralegal uh, at uh, uh, one of the largest law firms in New Jersey. Um, but Tim now uh, was our box loader. He picks up boxes, he loads them on a truck. He picks up boxes, loads them on a truck. That is his job every day, day in and day out. He was never late. And what he said to us was that 
throughout the last recession, he had gotten laid off and he couldn't find stable employment again. He couldn't find it for himself. And he said, I just, I never had access to potentially joining a technology company. I never had access to another shot at a career. Um, and so when I saw your advertising uh, or your advertisement for someone in the facility, I said, I can do that. I can join this tech company. There's not too many tech companies in central Jersey. Um, and for that chance, he looked me in the eye and said, I will never let you down. Um, and to this day, that, it's one of those moments where our, our, our mission is to help the world stock up through technology. Our timing, by all accounts, is pretty good. But that has nothing to do with our purpose. And what our purpose is in life, what our purpose is in our business life, what our purpose is in our family life, can only be discovered by yourself in moments like these. And what I'd like to impart on you guys is that it can be about the mission, it can be about the timing, but it really is about the purpose that makes you unstoppable. And so I hope all the inspiration today, I hope everything you've heard and everything you're about to hear will help you all find your purpose. Thank you very much. <laughs>